Welcome to Slain Excel Dragons video number 48. Hey, these are the videos that accompany the book, and we're still in chapter 6. In fact, I think this is our last video for chapter 6. And we are going to cover, oh, importing data into Excel. Now, we already saw one example uh, in video 46. We saw advanced filter how to get data based on certain criteria, so not even all the data, and go, bring it from one Excel workbook to another. In this one, we'll see how to copy and paste a data, or we'll talk about it. Get external data feature that allows us to have a dynamic link between Excel workbooks. We'll see how to import comma separated, tab separated, data from access, and even a stock web query. We're going to start in our Excel workbook, Excel is fun to start, and we're going to start on the, the sheet tab ID1. Now, um, you can download this workbook by clicking on the link uh, below the video or going to the DVD, but also for this video, there's a downloaded, uh, downloadable products folder, and it will be zipped, and then inside are some files you can use to practice this import. Let's go over to our Excel workbook. Whoops. All right, now we're here in the Excel is fun start file, and our goal is to get data from that other workbook. So there it is right there, that XLSM. Now, if you don't need it to be linked dynamically, which means if you don't care when the data changes here, you don't need it to update in this workbook, then just copy and paste. You know, you open this copy, paste it in here. But if you need them linked so they can update, anytime you change data here, it will change in this file here. Go to the data ribbon and get external data. Bunch of cool things here. We're going to click on existing connections because we want to go search for our Excel file that has the source data. This is the existing connections dialog box. I'm going to click that browse for more. Now I'm going to browse. And when I find it, I'm going to double click it. And it's going to look inside and find some sheets. My data is on the sheet called Product. First row of data contains column headers. Yes, indeed. Click OK. Table. Uh, this is how you want the data to look when you get over here. I certainly want to see it in a table on the existing worksheet. You can click properties and actually tell it things like how often you want it to refresh so it could refresh automatically. You could uncheck this all together but if that's the case we we'll might as well copy and paste. I'm going to click it uh, keep it checked that way I can refresh. Click OK and then click OK and just like that. Now I want to save this and I'm going to close this and go op open that other file open it up and let's just add something. So boom, just like that. Save. So all I did is here's the product sheet, right? Just added some more data. Now I'm going to go and find my file. Oh, oh, it didn't work. Oh, we have to refresh. Either notice that there's table tools up here, right? Design and there's some table tools refresh. But I'm going to just right click refresh just like a pivot table and boom, there it is. New data. All right, very cool. That means uh, some information or some raw data in another Excel workbook. We can do keep it over there, work on it and have the same data here and just refresh. Now, the two files need to be able to communicate with each other, which means if you change the file path or you want to keep them together. The way I do it is I always keep the workbooks together so that uh, they don't lose contact with each other. All right, now, over here, we, in our products, we just did it from Excel, but we want to see what to do if we have a text file or a CSV. This is going to be tab separated data. This is comma separated data. All right, I'm going to go over to our Excel workbook. Here's the deal. Not all programs like Excel and Access and some others can directly communicate with Excel. Right? So other Excel workbooks, we can communicate with Excel. Uh, Access, which you'll see in a moment, can communicate, which means we could tell Excel to directly look at over those file types. But not all file types can do that. And so the solution is that 
databases or websites or whatever, they export data as text, either separated by a comma or a space or a tab or other delimiters. We saw that in our last video when we did text to columns. No problem. So the other systems export it. There's this intermediary file that's text. And then, boom, that's how we can get data into Excel, even though Excel can't directly communicate with those programs. So let's go ahead. I'm going to click on this. It's going to have us navigate. I'm going to go find my text file. Now, you could do either one of these. You can try them both on your own. I'm just going to do this one, double click. Whoa, look at that text import wizard. It looks exactly the same as text to columns, right? Um, there's the delimited and fixed width. We have a delimited, which means we have a tab. Next. It was checked by default, and there it is. You can see a beautiful preview. Whichever other type you have, you could select that if you're if it wasn't tab. I'm going to click next. Here we can import. We can select any columns that we don't want and skip, just like we saw in our last video. General is great format, because that means this text will come in as a general, but it will be treated in a line to the left, just like text. And these will be numbers. All right, let's click Finish. Now I'm going to put this in, not in E13, since this is a different data set. I'm going to put it over here, uh, over in. I1 or something like that, and then click OK. And so now we have our data set. I'm always nervous when I see field names that are not formatted differently. My reflex is to immediately add some formatting. And there you go. That's from a text file. Looks like text to column, too. Now let's see how to do this from Access. I'm going to go over to the sheet ID2. And up here in our data, get external data, there's a button for Access. It's going to look pretty similar to what we did with. Excel, I'm going to go to the desktop. Except with Excel, when here we um, the import feature looked at sheets. This is a database, an access database. There's tables in there. So when I double click it, it's going to ask us to select the table. That's how raw data is stored in access. All right, I'm going to select my table, click OK. Looks the same. Exactly the same setup. I'm going to dump it on this sheet right there. Click OK. And sure enough, just like with our Excel example, when we linked it, this is now linked. If that data and access changes, all we have to do is right click refresh. Now, one more type of data import. I'm going to go over to the sheet ID3. Here we have a stock table, and there's a couple built in web queries. Now, web queries allow you to go out to websites. Um, if your computer's connected to the internet, then you can simply uh, right-click your web query, and it will refresh the data. There's some great built-in ones for stock quotes, uh, currency. Um, and so let's see how this works. Now, here's a table. We bought Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, uh, Whole Foods Market International, uh, Citibank, Bank of America, I think, and Dell. Boy, those were some bad buys. We bought them on 6-1-2007, right? That's like a couple months, one month before the financial crisis hit. Oh, and we bought 100 each, and these are our prices. Here's our historic uh, cost uh, that we paid. So we paid um, a little over 5,000 bucks for 100 shares of, I think that's Citibank. Uh, here's our current value, and guess what? We want this column to be linked live to the stock market, and that's what a built-in stock web query can do. Now, I'm going to put the web query down below here. So I'm going to go up to Data, Existing Connections, and here it is. Um, if you, sometimes these are not, uh, th this wizard isn't looking in the right place, and you just have to browse and find them. They're usually in the Microsoft uh, folders on uh, C drive. But here they are. I want my stock quotes. All right, um, where do you want to put your data? I'm going to put it right there. Click OK and ask, enter the stocks. Don't type them in. Put them in your cells and highlight them. And these have to be the ticker symbols. Use this value for to value reference for future refreshes. Absolutely want it to be able to automatically update. All right, I'm going to click OK. 
And here it's going, it's going, and there it is. Now it, it changed the column width, and I'm going to change this a little bit. And let's just look down here. That's pretty cool. These are a bunch of links uh, through the Microsoft uh, site, but um, no way. There's the last, the close, the high for today. Now I don't think. Now the stock markets are closed when I'm shooting this. Usually, if I were to do this during the stock markets, you could right-click refresh way down at the bottom here. Anyway, it's not going to change. Ooh, and it's changing the column width uh, when we imported it. Let's go right-click. No, data range properties. I need to preserve cell formatting, but I, I want to uncheck this one right here. So I don't want the column widths to adjust. I have actually in past versions not had a good good luck with that button. Every time I, I click it, it doesn't seem to work. But I'm going to right click refresh. And uh, there it is. It doesn't change the column widths. But that'll, that'll be live. Now we just highlight this range here and the cell up at the top. equals, and they're in the same order as they are dumped into the sheet, so I'm going to say last, and then control enter. Okay, so it looks like Google in 2007, uh, doing pretty good, 21% gain. That's over the, the many years, so. Uh, but of course, Microsoft down a lot, Yahoo, uh, C, yeah, down 91%, Bank of America, 72%. All right, uh, that's a bunch about importing data. In our uh, next video, we'll start to talk about charts. All right, see you next video. All right, so that's chapter six. Here is some homework in the Slain Excel Dragons homework one to nine workbook. We're on the sheet, page, chapter six, pages 434 to 64. There we are, sheets 84 to 90 with some more exciting homework, and as always, uh, homework problem 84, there it is with the descriptions at the top and then the answer. 85, the answer, and all the way to 90. So 90 amazing, fun-filled homework problems. All right, we'll see you next chapter where we'll start charts.